Before we begin, I would like to show the note card that I will be using. Imagine this. You have just been told that a person that you love has been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and has 6 months to live. Whether it be your mom, your dad, sister, brother, or whoever comes to mind, you really love and care about this person and would hate to see them suffer. Now, when you really think about it, would you rather have this person go to the hospital and go through chemotherapy and treatment and lose their hair and have their body become weak for the last six months of life? Or would you rather have them be with the people that they love doing what they love for the last six months of life? Many believe that terminally ill patients should have the right to decide when they can die. Throughout the United States, committing suicide or attempting to commit suicide is not a legal offense, but if you help a person attempt or commit suicide, then it is a criminal act. So what exactly is physician-assisted suicide? Physician-assisted suicide occurs when a physician facilitates a patient's death by providing the necessary means and information to enable the patient to perform the life-ending act. Physician-assisted suicide allows people who are terminally ill and in unbearable pain to get a lethal prescription from their physician to end their lives. Assisted suicide should be legal in all states for those suffering from an incurable or painful disease or condition because competent people deserve the right to have a choice. It will reduce the damaging financial effects of hospital care on families and it will preserve the individual right of people to determine their fate. To start off as to why physician-assisted suicide should be legalized throughout all states, um, one generic rule must be followed that only those who are competent and have the mental capacity to communicate their own decisions regarding their uh, terminal illness are the only people who should be allowed to use this process. According to N. Levi from British Medical Journal, physician-assisted suicides benefits outweigh the risks. Various forms of medical assisted suicides have been approved in many states and each law has its own limits, rules, and guidelines. And California was actually just approved for this process recently in the year of 2015. So to explain how the process of physician assisted suicide works, it is fairly simple but also extremely serious. So to begin, patients who are eligible for eligible for the act must take one written and two oral exams over a 15-day period. Then the physician who is prescribing the medication and one consulting physician uh, must confirm the patient's diagnosis and prognosis. Now if either doctor believes that the patient is mentally impaired or incompetent, then the patient will then be taken to a psychiatric or psychological exam, exam place. And if the patient has any questions regarding this act, then the physician must inform them of any alternatives such as hospice care or pain control. Now, once all of this is approved, the patient will then be given their prescription. Now, this prescription is the prescription that will conclude the life ending act. So usually it consists of multiple types of pills and as well as directions so that there are no complications during the process. And from research, it actually turns out that majority of the people who order this prescription don't actually end up using it. But for those who do, they usually perform this act surrounded by the people that they love and in the comfort of their own homes. Now, a few years back, I watched a documentary that was called How to Die in Oregon from 2011. And this documentary showed real life stories of those who chose physician assisted suicides. And from this documentary, I it really showed how simple and painless this process is. So if a person chooses this route, they would be comfortable in their own home, surrounded by people that they love, and they would just slowly fall asleep in their own bed. And their doctors would also be right there in the room with them just to make sure that there are no complications. 
Doesn't this sound nicer than going through weeks and weeks of treatment for an illness that may, that's uncurable while feeling all of the side effects and feelings your body gets weaker and weaker to the point where you can't even take care of yourself? Another reason as to why physician-assisted suicide should be legalized in all states is because it would reduce the damaging financial effects of hospital care on their families. Now, we all know that human life is extremely expensive, and there are only few terminally ill patients who can afford to prolong their life as long as they can. And for those who are not so wealthy, the cost of their lives relies on their families. Now, of course, if your loved one is dying, you're not going to care about the expenses while they're still alive because you want to do everything in your power to make sure they're okay and to help them. But according to re world-renowned philosopher Ron Ronald Dworkin, the cost of maintaining a dying person has been est estimated from ranging about $2,000 to $10,000 a month. When that loved one passes away, the family will have to struggle with a, fi a huge financial and hospital bill that will most likely cause them to end up in a financial ruin. Another statement by Ronald Dworkin explains that many people want to save their relatives the expenses from keeping them pointlessly alive. Most terminally ill patients want their deaths to be as peaceful as possible. If terminally ill patients have the option of assisted suicide, they can ease their family's financial burden as well as their own suffering. Now, the last main point as to why assisted suicide should be legal in all states is because it will preserve the right of an individual to determine their own fate, which is a super important one. Assisted suicide is an option that one has to make based off of their own moral standards, their will to live, and how they want to die. No man or woman should ever be denied the right if he or she is suffering. The terminally ill also have rights just like normal healthy citizens do, and they cannot be denied the right not to suffer. In conclusion, assisted suicide should be legalized in all states for those suffering from an incurable and terminal illness because competent people deserve the right to have a choice. It will reduce the, da the damaging financial effects of hospital care on families, and it will preserve the individual right of people to determine their own fate. Dying with dignity will not be seen as a person who is waiting to die, but as human beings making one final active choice in their lives. Remember when I said that helping another person commit suicide is a criminal act? Well, as for doctors, the Hippocratic Oath cannot be used to deny the right to assisted suicide. Therefore, this act cannot be held against physicians. Thank you.